Paper condiment cups at fast food restaurants. Have you ever asked yourself why the fast food restaurants use such tiny cups for the ketchup and mustard? No, I haven't, but let's find out. Let's find out why. When you unfold the paper cups, they can turn into small paper platters that can hold a great deal more sauce for all your dipping needs. Well then, I will probably never use that. Hey everybody, welcome back. I just went to the dentist and my teeth really hurt. It is rather unpleasant going to the dentist after two and a half years. Mighty unpleasant. <laughs> so unpleasant that I have to go back for a second visit. Great. The first one was so fun. Today on my channel, we are doing everyday objects with hidden features that you did not know about. Maybe you might have seen this video topic around. I've seen it on a few different channels. I haven't actually watched any of the videos on it. And I'm just a yearning for some learning today. So maybe if you are too, you should stick around and keep watching. Also, by the way, guys, if you do want to like interact with me on this channel, you should turn your notifications on because I respond to comments within, you know, maybe the first half an hour of a video going up on the weekdays, not on the weekends. Sometimes I need a weekend. But yeah, so if you haven't turned your notifications on, do that and I do my best to respond to comments when the video first goes up. Just a little fun fact for you. Pom poms on beanies. Mm, there you have a, a feature. I thought they were just cute. They are cute. They kind of remind me of bunny rabbits. The pom-poms on beanies and other hats might look cute and fluffy now, but they had an actual function before. French sailors used to wear hats with pom-poms so they wouldn't hurt their heads on the ceilings of the ship during rough weather. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But I feel like you would need to wear them like right on top of your head though. Like, you know, if it's kind of like back here, I doubt it would. And that's where the fashionable, fashionable way to wear a pom-pom beanie is you put the beanie on the back of your head. So I'm assuming that it used to be like here sort of situation. But interesting, nevertheless. The drawer under your oven. Remember that drawer under your oven? The one where you keep your kitchen gear that doesn't belong anywhere else? It wasn't actually designed for that. Interesting. Manufacturers only made that drawer for keeping food warm until you're ready to serve it. Now tell us how many people do you know who actually do this? I don't. I just like keep it in the oven. I guess if you're like, like one of those like cooks, you know, those, those people who cook a lot. I would imagine if you're running out of room in your oven, you could put it in the drawer underneath, but it's also dirty down there. I don't know if I would just like put my dinner there. Yeah, I definitely use mine for pots and pans. Do you guys use the drawer for your pots and pans or do you use them for keeping your food warm? Are you normal or are you not normal? Is the real question here. Car seat headrests. Headrests are made to be adjustable to comfortably support a person's head, whether they're tall or short. While this makes sense, why make them completely detachable as well? Well, survival. Okay. When you put your headrest out of the seat, it has two sturdy long metal bars. That means if you find yourself trapped inside a car and need to get out quickly, you can simply detach your headrest and use it to smash out the window. Interesting. Wow, that's cool. I'll remember that if I ever get in a car crash and I'm not passed out. The ridges on coins. Ridge patterns on coins are a relic of the past when precious metal coins would be as valuable as their weight. However, some sneaky rogues would shave off the edges of coins and use that metal to mint new coins while spending the shaved coins as if they didn't weigh less. Wow. The ridges were added so it would be obvious when someone had shaved off parts of a coin and was trying to cheat the system. Oh, that's cool. So why did they stay like that then? Why are there still rivets, little ridges in our coins if we don't actually base the value on weight anymore? Just a strange tradition we've decided to keep up with? Interesting. It's kind of hard to imagine a coin without ridges, you know? Like some coins don't have them. But yeah, the quarter has them. The Canadian quarter has them. Hmm. Holes in pen caps. Some people can't help but chew the caps of their pens. Actually, that's true. I did do that a lot. I, uh, did anyone else like chew their pen caps from stress? Cause they didn't know the answer to the math question. And then they just like, nah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I do that a lot. Well, the pen caps are potential health hazards because people chew them and uh, you could swallow it and choke. The holes in the caps allow people to breathe in case they choke on the pen cap. Get a little like, little straw in your throat. Interesting. Very interesting. Holes in pots and pan handles. Oh, I actually do know this one. I've heard of this before. Actually, I feel like I've seen one of these articles before and that's why I know it. Yeah, so the holes in your pots and your pans, you know, in the handle there, 
You can put your spatulas in there. Yeah, so you don't rest them on the inside of the, the, the bowl there. And uh, you, just, you just pop them in the hole so that they don't burn. Isn't that interesting? You're totally gonna go home and do that now. <laughs> I know you are. Oh, and it is also so you won't get your kitchen counter messy. There you go, you're welcome. The ridges on the F and J keys on keyboards. Oh yeah, they do have ridges. The ridges on the F and J keys on the keyboard, they help your fingers find their location. This way you can type without having to glance down much easier. That's interesting. I wonder if it's one of those things that you like, you clock subconsciously, but I'd, I never associate like, uh, maybe. I never really understood why they were there. I couldn't like, before I just learned this fact, I could never just like be like, oh, that ridge is on the F and the other one is on the J. It's like, no, like I just feel those ridges cause I'm used to them. I learned something today. The hole in a soda can tab. Oh, I think I know this one too. The hole in a soda can tab is actually, you, tw you twist it around like the little like thing that you thing. You twist it around and then you pop your straw in there, in a little hole. I've, you know, even knowing that, I've never done that. <laughs> I've never popped like a straw in a Coke. I haven't had a can of Coke in years. I haven't had Coke or pop or anything like that in years. I stick strictly to like my soda stream. But even when I did learn this fun fact, I never put a straw in my Coke. I kind of just drank out of it, you know? Cool, very cool. Wooden coat hangers, you might, not to know this, they're made out of cedar wood because cedar wood repels moths. Interesting. Yeah, I kind of just thought they were better for like suits and like heavy clothing. I didn't realize that they were actually like made out of wood because like people get moths in their in their clothes and their in their closets and stuff. I feel like that's a, that's an old people problem though. Like I'm, I don't think I've ever had like moths in my clothing or anywhere really the hole at the top of a lollipop stick oh yeah there is a hole there this weird little hole emerging after you finish a candy has been bugging us for years who would ever put a whistle in there if it doesn't it does kind of look like a whistle doesn't it you know like a little recorder <laughs> nice little flute it turns out the reason for this lollipop stick hole has to do with manufacturing when pouring hot molten caramel into the mold some of it seeps into the hole and hardens. It allows the candy to stay on the stick and not to fall off. Smart, very smart. So it wouldn't just like slip off, you know? That's very interesting. The button placement on women's shirts. You might've wondered why women's buttons are always on the left, especially when you consider that most people are right-handed. Oh yeah, that's true. Turns out putting the buttons on the left of clothes is an old tradition carried over from a time when buttons represented your social and financial status. If you own buttons, you probably were being dressed by a chambermaid and the buttons on your left were on her right when she was facing you. So why has that stayed a tradition then? We don't have chambermaids anymore. That's weird. Why is it just on women's shirts? Ree! The tiny jeans pocket. Ooh, I've always wondered what that's for. I usually put lighters in there. A teeny tiny pocket that's seemingly pointless. If you wear a good pair of jeans, chances are it has a teeny tiny pocket. The same place where you get your thumb stuck now and then. It was originally meant to tuck in a pocket watch. Oh. Levi's points out that it has served more purposes throughout the years, like storing coins, matches, and tickets. Yeah, see? Yeah, I would put my lighter in there. It's a perfect side for a lighter. No, I'm smoking weed. Get your head out of the gutter. The hole in the pasta spoon. True. What is that for? Let's find out. Even if you're a pasta lover, it doesn't mean that you know what a hole in a spaghetti ladle is for. The hole is designed to serve as a portion measurement. Oh! It should suffice for one portion of spaghetti. So if you're cooking for two, make sure you get two handfuls of pasta to go through it. Wow. Wow. Do, 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 do. I feel like this whole video is just a, the more you know. <laughs> that tiny hole in airplane windows. I've always wondered what that's about. Why is there a hole? You know? It serves two purposes, not one, but two. It allows airflow through 
to keep from too much pressure building in the plane and busting the window as it rises in altitude. And second, it keeps the window from fogging up with all the warm breath of the passengers. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. I love to learn. Don't you? Indentation at the bottom of wine bottles. True. Why is that there? It almost makes it so that there's less wine in the bottle. Contrary to popular belief, the indentation at the bottom of a wine bottle does not actually indicate the superior quality of the wine, also known as a punt. It used to be found in hand-blown wine bottles. The seam of the bottle at the bottom was pushed up in order to prevent an outward nub at the bottom that would keep a bottle from balancing upright. Interesting. It's also thought that the punt added to the bottle's structural integrity. Since modern day bottles are much stronger and machine made, punts serve no practical purpose and simply remain part of the tradition. It also makes it so there's less wine in the bottle. <laughs> I've noticed this. <laughs> the different colored bristles on your toothbrush. Okay, I thought those, that was just a stylistic choice or something. While you may have thought that the colorful bristles on your toothbrush are just yet another marketing gimmick, it actually serves a purpose. The blue color of your toothbrush bristles will fade right around the same time you need to get a new one. Hmm. It's a reminder that you aren't keeping things as clean and fresh as you could be. <laughs> Don't I know it. What do you mean? I'm always clean and fresh. Look at me. Do I look clean? Do I look fresh? Thank you. I literally just got an email from my dentist. <laughs> The brushes alongside escalators. I thought that was for cleaning your shoes. Oh, you may have been using these to clean your shoes. Yes, I have. Funny you say that. These bristles are actually a big safety feature. One of the biggest reasons for escalator mishaps is people getting their clothes and bags stuck in them when they stand too close to the sides. These nylon bristles play with your mind and make you keep your feet away from the escalator's skirt panels, hence avoiding accidents. I mean, I don't really keep my feet away because I use them to clean my shoes, but interesting. Yeah, escalators are scary. They're scary as shit. Get caught in them as a child. The metal plates on staplers. Oh yeah. Huh. It's weird how I'm like clocking these things that I was just like, oh, I thought that was just there because it's there. <laughs> Not because it actually serves a purpose. You may have assumed that it was there to bend your staples, but did you know that there's more to it than that and your stapler actually has settings? The metal plate is called an anvil. And if you turn your stapler upside down, you can adjust it by spinning the wheel until it lines up with the seemingly random hole in the metal plate. This is the setting for a temporary staple and will guide the arms for your staple as I don't give a shit about this one. <laughs> the stripes in toothpaste. Why is that there? In the 1970s, cleaning the mouth to keep it healthy wasn't enough. People wanted something in the toothpaste to freshen the breath too. Aquafresh answered the call by adding a blue stripe to their paste to indicate that it could do both. After people began paying more attention to the health of their gums, the brand added a third red stripe, indicating that the paste now had triple action. Cleaning, freshening, and plaque control. Even though solid white toothpaste offers the same benefits, companies continue to add stripes to their paste because it still sells. That's so weird. Isn't it weird how just like a color can make us think, oh, well, this one has cavity control. This one freshens your breath. There's a blue stripe. Okay. <laughs> the number 57 on a Heinz bottle. Isn't that just the date that it was like, oh no, it's been around for longer than that, 1869. Oh yeah, why is that then? The embossed number 57 on a Heinz bottle is what the company spokesperson called a soft spot. All you need to do is apply a firm tap where the bottle narrows and the ketchup will come out easier. Oh. I'm assuming this applies to like glass bottles. Cause like now we have those squeezable ones that like you don't really need to do that. But next time I'm at a restaurant, I'm gonna do that. Top the little, s but why is it a 57 though? Why is the number there? Is it like a significant number? The tiny dot next to the camera on an iPhone. Oh yeah. Is that a microphone? Yeah, it's a microphone guys. See that little, f see that little thing right there? That's a microphone. Chinese takeout boxes. Oh, I think I know this one. Takeout boxes are made in such a way that if you unfold them, they become cardboard dinner plates. The food is already on the platter, so you can just eat it. But I've never actually seen someone do that though. Like I've usually just seen people like eat it right off, out of the box. Cause it's like a, a bowl that way, you know? And this is an ugly friggin' plate, you know? Not cute. This pocket in women's underwear. What's that? <laughs> Some women have been using them to store tampons or other small private items weird. You guys put your tampons in there? <laughs> That's 
Quack. Weird, don't do that. <laughs> the pocket is actually called a panty gusset. It was never intended to be a pocket. It's an extra piece of fabric sewn in for women's hygiene. In the higher end panties, the gusset is sewn completely shut. It becomes a pocket when manufacturers are unwilling to spend the time and the money to get those last few stitches in. Shut up. Really? That's funny. Good to know. I'm not sure why it's good to know, but it's good to know. <laughs> the side holes in Converse shoes. Oh yeah. Isn't that just there to like let your, your feet air out? Oh, so you can get creative with your laces. Interesting. I would never do that though. Converse don't look good with that kind of lace. Yeah, ventilation. The loop on your shirt. What's that for? There are some shirts that contain a piece of cloth in the form of a loop that was designed so you can hang your shirts on a hook in a dressing room or even a closet. Perfect solution when you don't have hangers. Wow. Wow. The colorful bread tags. All those not just to keep your bread fresh? Okay. If you collect bread tags for some odd reason, <laughs> I do though, I do. But that's just because you never know when you're gonna need one. You might have noticed that they come in different colors. Yes, I have noticed that. It turns out that the color tags indicate the day the bread was delivered. So if you need to know how fresh your bread is, all you have to do is look at the color tag. Hmm. Don't they usually have like the expiry date on them too though? Hmm. hmm. Well guys, that was hidden features on everyday objects that you probably saw but didn't think it was a hidden feature. And now I told you that there is a hidden feature there. And I hope that your life has been changed forever for the better, especially, you know, like that ladle thing where you can put the ladle in the hole, you know? I use that, that, it's a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe.